only in character. This is the window. It's like the homework. Didn't I give you guys the viewing window on the homework? Well, at least you guys was, at least you guys knew the first one was the X one and the second one was the Y. Some other classes they, they use the first one for the Ys and the second one for the X. So strange. Okay, so we we got nothing the rest of this week. So probably one. Oh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens tomorrow. But so next week we'll, we'll have one quiz and then the test is next week sometime. I'm not sure exactly depends how we get through this during homecoming. Okay, so the goal of all of this, probably the most important thing in this chapter is you have to be able to solve polynomial equations without a calculator. So, solve this equation. 2x to the fourth plus 7x cubed minus 10x squared minus 33x plus 18 equals zero. Okay, so to solve a polynomial equation, what you need to do is you need to factor it, right? That's the key. And how do you factor? You use synthetic division. So 2, 7, negative 10, negative 33, 18. Now like we were talking about yesterday, how do you figure out what number to put in the box? Yeah, you look at the possible rational roots. In fact, this is going to be a question on the next quiz. List the possible rational roots. So how do you do that? You look at the factors of the last one. See, this is, if you remember anything from last year, this was P, and this is Q, right? Remember that? So what are the factors of 18? Well, it's plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3. Six, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 18. What are the factors of 2? Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, right? So if you take all the combinations of these numbers over these numbers, those are the possible rational roots. So 1 over 1, 2 over 1, always plus or minus, that 3 over 1, 6 over 1, 9 over 1, 18 over 1. And then now we go over 2. 1 over 2 would be plus or minus half. 2 over 2 is 1, we already got that. 3 over 2 plus or minus 3 halves. 6 over 2 is 3, we already got that. 9 over 2, and then 18 over 2 is 9, we already got that. These are the possible rational roots. In other words, if this equation has any rational root, it has to come from that list. So in other words, if you do synthetic division, no sense try 4 or 5 because it doesn't have a prayer of working because it's not on that list. Because synthetic division is basically a guess and check procedure. So what you want to do is you have to use these theorems to reduce the amount of time that you're going to spend on it. Okay, so what number should I try first? Yeah, you should always try one first and then work your way up until you get to the upper bound. So let's try one. Go. Now we're looking for the remainder to be zero, is it? No. <laughs> no. So one doesn't work. That means x minus not one is not a factor. Okay, but then, if this is an upper bound, then we can stop there and go the other direction. Is one an upper bound? What are we looking for? All if you synthetically divide by a positive number, you're looking for all of these numbers here to be non-negative. But we have some negative numbers there, so one is not an upper bound, so we keep on going. Yeah. Is there a difference between non-negative and positive? Yes. Non-negative means not negative, which means it includes zero. Where if you just said positive, that means that doesn't include zero. Positive means greater than zero. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yep. Okay. Okay, so what number should I try next? Now usually I don't like to try fractions, so I'm I am i am gonna go on to two. That's what I would do if I were. So four, eleven, twenty-two. 12, 24. Oh, look at that! Woo! Yay, yay, yay! Live action! Right there. We, we, the remainder came out zero. So that means x minus 2 is one of the factors. It means 2 is a root. Okay, now we're down to this now. 
You see this? See, we started with a fourth degree, but now we're down to this. This is just a cubic. And then you do the whole process again. So you look at factors of 9 over factors of 2. Those are the possible rational roots. So in other words, now we got a new list now. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not going to write it all down. We can keep track of it in our head. Okay, now, if 1 didn't work for the first time, should I try 1 again? No. No, ho, ho, you don't try 1 again. So what should I try? Should I go on to 3 or should I try 2 again? Yeah, you should try two again because you might have a double root, right? So, in fact, it might be a triple root. You don't know. That's why you should always try, try it again. So, 2, 4, 15, 30, 42, 84, 75. So, x minus 2 is not another factor. However, we did discover something. Look at these numbers. They're all non-negative. What does that mean? 2 is an upper bound for the, 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 the roots of this equation. In other words, do not try any number bigger than 2 because they don't have a prayer of working. That's why you've got to know these theorems. Otherwise, you know what people are going to do? They're going to try, they're going to try 3, they're going to try 9. But then, no sense because 2 is an upper bound. You guys understand? There are no roots bigger than 2. So now let's go the other direction. So erase this. So what should I try? Negative one. Negative one. That's what I used to do. Negative one and then go down until you hit the lower bound. So let's see. Two. Negative two. Nine. Negative nine. Three. Negative three. Negative twelve. That's it. So no, it's not a root. Is that a lower bound though? No. No. What are we looking for when we have a lower bound? Alternative. Yeah. So when you synthetically divide by a negative number, we're looking for alternating signs. Non-negative, non-positive, non-negative, non-positive. Or if you want to just keep it straight, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so negative one didn't work, what should I try? Negative two. Well, wait a minute. That was so stupid. Why didn't we even try two on that one? Sorry. You know why? Because look, factors of nine over factors of two. Yeah, two is not even a factor of nine. <laughs> But that's okay, it was an upper bound, we learned something, right? But that was stupid to do too, just letting you know that. Okay, so we shouldn't try negative two because two is not a factor of nine. So what should we try? Negative three. That was just stupid. I can't believe I did that. I think I'm getting, I think I'm just, that's age. I'm gonna blame age on that. Five, negative 15, negative three, nine, zero. And we got that on video too. We got that, my stupid this on video. Oh, so the remainder came out zero, and so that means x plus three is a factor. And then what does this stand for? Two x squared plus five x minus three. That's a quadratic. Once you get it down to a quadratic, you're pretty much done already, right? So this stands for two x squared plus five x minus three equals zero. And like I said, once you get it down to a quadratic, you either factor it or use the quadratic formula. Does that factor? Yes. It does? Let's try it. Two x x. 3 and 1, plus and minus, yes it does. Yee -hee -hee! Live action! So what are your four roots? x equals 2, negative 3, 1 half, negative 3. Oh, negative 3 is a double root. Because look, x plus 3 quantity squared, right? So you do have four roots now, it's just that negative 3 is a double root. Do we list it twice? No. Okay, so there you go. So we didn't even have to worry about a lower bound because we, we hit it as well already. Yamaha. Is it possible for a positive number to be a lower bound? Uh, not, not according to that theorem. See, when you synthetically divide by a positive number, you're looking for all non-negative coefficients, right? When you synthetically divide by a negative number, you're looking for alternating signs. So according to that theorem, no. But there might be another theorem where, yes, but I, I don't know of those theorems there. Okay. So that's pretty much the lesson. Shall we just do a few problems as examples to reduce your homework? I did number three. We should do number three. <laughs> Yeah, what the heck? Why don't we do number three? Well, what about number one? So, did you guys actually try some homework? Yeah. 
Well, were there any questions on number one? Boy, let me guess. One C. No, the other classes haven't even tried these, so you, maybe we shouldn't even do that. Yeah. No, like I told you yesterday. Well, let me, I'll just repeat it again to get it on video. Like problem 1A, x to the 4. You don't want to do synthetic division unless you absolutely have to. Okay? Okay, like this. It's a 4th degree polynomial. Do I want to do synthetic division? No, because this is, has quadratic form, right? Look, if this power is double that power, and that's a constant, it has quadratic form. So you can treat it like a quadratic. So you can factor it x squared, x squared, 6 and 2, minus plus. So therefore, x squared equals either 6 or negative 2. Therefore, x equals plus or minus root 6, or plus or minus i root 2. And those are your four roots. So synthetic division is kind of like a last resort. You don't want to do it unless you absolutely have to. Now look at problem 1c. Did you guys even attempt problem 1c? Yes. Lee? Mm -hmm. Don't even ask there. Morisada? <laughs> don't even try, yeah? Peterson? The triumvirate right here. <laughs> Good guy. So what did you, what happened? You heard from the other classes that were no, there was no homework, that's why. Yeah. Perhaps. Just say yes, just say yes. <laughs> no. Okay, look, I'm, not, I'm just going to start you on 1c x to the 6 minus 7x cubed minus 8 equals 0. Do I want to use synthetic division on that? No, it has quadratic form. This power is double that power, and that's a constant. So you can treat it like a quadratic. So what are you going to get? x cubed and x cubed, 8 and 1, minus plus. And then what do you have? That's a difference of cubes, and that's a sum of cubes. Now, when you come out of Algebra 2, it is assumed you know the difference in sums of cubes. Do huh. I have to write it on the board for the last time right now? Yeah. <laughs> All righty then. So if you have a cubed plus b cubed, that's equal to a plus b times a squared minus a b. <laughs> Who said c? There's no c in this. <laughs> plus b squared. And then if you had a difference of cubes, that's equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So from this day forward, I will assume we know this. Oh boy. Anyway, if you ever forget, like you're on a big test, and oh man, I can't remember the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes, just do synthetic division. Like for example, okay, like this one, what the heck? x cubed minus 8, oh yeah, I know I'm supposed to know the difference of cubes, but I just can't remember it. Do synthetic division, 1, 0, 0, negative 8. Now, most students, at least they remember this part here, they just cannot remember that other part, right? So you know it's going to be x minus 2, except I can't remember that other stuff. So, do synthetic division. What do I put in the box? 2, drop the 1 down. 2, 2, 4, 4. 8, 0. Oh, x minus 2 is a factor. What's the other factor? Right down there, baby. What does that stand for? x squared plus 2x plus 4. See, so maybe you don't need to memorize it anymore. Because now we have synthetic division. But it's way faster if you know the sum and differences of cubes. It's just a lot better. Even in AB calculus, they're expected to know that. Because there's a big difference between AB and BC, but AB, you, you still got to know stuff. And then, we talked about factor by grouping yesterday. Because there was one problem yesterday, 1B. Can we do it again to get it on video? Did you copy it down for your homework? Factor by grouping. Okay, let's just do it again just to get it on video. And then I'm going to give you a harder one, and then that will be the end of class. Okay, so this is 1b. You guys are just shameless, yeah? 3x cubed minus 16x squared minus 12x plus 64 equals 0. Now, yes, you can do synthetic division, but then you got to go oh, factors of 64 over factors of 3. That's a whole bunch, yeah? You know what's a telltale sign for, for seeing that you can do factor by grouping? You look at the ratio of, if you have four terms, 
you look at the ratio of the first two and the second, the last two, if they have the same ratio, then you can do factor by grouping. So the ratio is 3 to negative 16, 3 to negative 16, same ratio. So you group it like this. What can I factor out from the first two terms? X squared. X squared. What's left? Okay, and then what can I factor out from these two? A negative 4. What's left? 3x minus 16. See? Since this and this are common, you can factor that out. So you factor out a 3x minus 16. What's going to be left? x squared minus 4. And then we got it down to a quadratic, and that's a difference of squares. That's x plus 2 times x minus 2. And then your three roots are 60 thirds, negative 2, and 2. Yay, 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 yay! Live action! You guys ever watch The Call of the Wild Man? No. <laughs> Only one person? Animal Planet on Sunday nights? Shows the ball. Yeah, that's the best show on television right now. This guy from Kentucky, in the backwoods, he like catches animals with his hands. So like if you have a varmint at your house, like, oh I have a raccoon I can't get rid of, or a snake, or a possum, or whatever, coyote, yeah, he, he comes to your house, bats, rats, whatever, whatever varmints, he comes to your house, and he, he figures out where, where, where they are, and what it is, and then he goes in, he snatches them with his hands, puts them in a bag, and then you pay him $60, and then he leaves. Yeah, skunks, whatever. In fact, you know what, tomorrow I'm going to bring in a, a video thing, yeah. so maybe you can watch some highlights. Okay. He's the turtle man. You never heard of the turtle man? <laughs> I can't believe only one person watches, watches that. Okay, Sunday night, about, I think from 7 o'clock, Morisana, they have like a Call of the Wild Man marathon, right? They have like four shows in a row. I just always check to see if it's on. What about Gator Boys? I don't watch that. It's okay. Yeah, I don't watch that. Okay, now, what? Okay, this is what we call simple factor by group. But then let's do more complicated here. Here, last problem for today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot just say it to yourself. <laughs> That's so boorish. Okay, x cubed minus 3x plus 2. Now, of course, if you cannot do factor by grouping, we learned factor by grouping in algebra 1, in algebra 2. By now, we should be experts, but that's usually not the case. So that's why I'm reviewing it. So, because I had a student one year, this was back in 1999. He graduated 1999. He never did synthetic division. You know why? Because he always did factor by grouping. He said, Mr. Park, I don't need synthetic division. I just factor by group all the time. Anyway, that's what we have synthetic division for. So, you know, because he was royalty, the rest of us. So he went to MIT, became an engineer. Okay, because is this a simple factor by grouping? No, because look, there's no other term here. There's no x squared term. The ratio is 1 to 0. Is that the same thing as 1 to 0? I don't think so. So watch this. So, so what you got to do is, and do these harder ones, what do I have to put here? See, those, there's, no, there's no second term. So what you have to do is you got to kind of have to split it up. So since I have, I, I can kind of see ahead. This is what I'm going to do. Minus x squared plus x squared. Because is it negative x squared plus 1x squared, no x squared? So you have to have you have to split up the 0x squared into like, see, but this is where you got to figure it out. Is it negative x squared and positive x squared? Or is it positive x squared and negative x squared? Or it could be positive 3x squared and negative 3x squared. You got to have to have foresight. Judging from those stairs, we don't have it. So how are we going to group it? Are we going to group it like 2 and 3 or 3 and 2? 2 and 3. Yeah, 2 and 3. See, because look at that. That can be factored. X squared minus 3 plus 2. Yeah? What can I factor out from the first two terms? X squared. X squared. What's left? X minus 1. Okay. And then what, how do I factor this? X minus 1. X minus 2. Now, is that going to work? Yes. Yes, because you have a common factor. These two are common. That's your goal. Your goal is to get the same factor here and here so you can factor it out.
That's how factoring by grouping works. So if I factor out the x minus 1, what's going to be left? x squared plus this, x minus 2. And then now we got it down to a quadratic. So how do you factor this? x plus 2, x minus 1. And then it looks like we have a double root. So your roots are going to be 1, which is a double root, and negative 2. Now, of course, if you, I explain this every year, but usually only one, maybe one, two people at the most, they actually practice factor by grouping. This takes practice. You're not going to just suddenly do it. Most people will just dive into synthetic division. So it doesn't matter as long as you get the job done. So if you can't do this, this is what you do, synthetic division. So you go factors of 2 over factors of 1. So it's either plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. What number should I start with? 1. So I put 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, maybe 2. Yeah, we hit it, baby! So this stands for x minus 1, and that stands for x squared plus x minus 2. And then that you can factor it. So this is a quadratic, x plus 2, x minus 1. Hey, Mr. Park! Synthetic division was faster. Not if you can, ha not if you have foresight. <laughs> okay, whatever. Okay, so when you do tonight's problems, you, you want to ask yourself, what's the fastest way to do it? Because you can always do factor by grouping, but it's just sometimes it's hard to see. Like number 1D, at the ratio of the coefficients are not the same. However, you can do factor by grouping if you split up the negative 4x squared. You know what I'm talking about? So, I don't know. Give it a try and see what happens. Okay, so what did I tell you on last night's homework? Spend two nights on it? Mm -hmm. So after tonight, you're supposed to finish it. Okay, have, okay maybe we can go to plan C. Uh, how, many, um, how many worksheets are there total? So you, I'll see what I can do for you. So. Why don't I just look over here? Yeah, but then, which one, what's the last one? Poly 5 is actually the last lesson, and Poly 6 and Poly 7 are, are practice tests. Do we really need to do two practice tests? Yes. Well, it didn't help last time, did it? <laughs> It did. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been even more. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> um, okay, let me think. Let me think. Because are you guys going to be even in any mood to learn tomorrow? And then the football team, what? You guys even come to class? Oh, we came on Saturday. Yeah, so you still get out at noon, right? <laughs> what? Don't you? I guess. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, gosh. Because then I'm thinking, if you're in no mood to learn tomorrow, because then tomorrow is like we learn heavy duty stuff. Yeah, but you're honors. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. Okay, I'm not going to proclaim we go to Plan C, but maybe we'll go to Plan C tomorrow. Plan C is you can have three nights to do this whole work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, just try and do this whole work tonight, and if cannot, then figure out something tomorrow. <laughs> we only do this because it's homecoming, you know. This wasn't homecoming. We just push on, baby. Okay, wait. Let me turn off the camera now before I forget.